What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today we're gonna be cracking open the brand new Soul Burner Structure Deck, which Konami conveniently released on Valentine's Day because they know the only true relationship we have to celebrate is their abusive one with their product. But the Soul Burner Structure Deck is a incredible structure deck, not only because of the fact that it contains Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, one of the most in-demand and probably one of the most universally best hand traps in the entire game, reprinted at common, but also because this could potentially be a tier one meta deck and one of the cheapest you can possibly build. So you can expect to see a lot of Salamangrate content coming soon, and I hope you guys enjoy that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this opening. So I'm really excited. This is an archetype that is kind of reminiscent of Zodiac in some ways, and I think that's pretty neat, even though obviously it's not gonna be nearly as good. It's not nearly as splashable, but I think for what it is, this is actually a pretty neat archetype. Archetype. And I do want to shout out my local game store, We Play Games, because in my opinion, they are one of the best game stores around, and they hooked me up with my structure decks. And if you're in Vegas, definitely check them out. So here we are. And another thing that I really like too about the direction they're starting to take with these structure decks is that you're actually getting more than like a single extra deck card. So you're getting like, what is it? I think there's maybe like five extra deck cards in here or something like that. So if you actually buy three of these structure decks, you actually kind of have like a 15 card extra deck. And again, it's not like it's, you know, incredible by any means, cause this is still a structure deck, but this is one of those structure decks where you can just buy three of it and you have a very cohesive deck for what it's worth. So we're gonna start off with the ultra rares, Salamangrate Heat Leo. Now this isn't actually new. This this is actually one of the first times I think I've ever seen this. They actually included an alternate art card in a structure deck of a card that's already been printed. Heat Leo came out in one of the previous core sets already as an ultra rare. Honestly, I think I like this artwork better than the original one, but very incredible card. Not like key to the strategy, like it's not pivotal, but it's still an incredibly powerful card for what it is. And you're gonna wanna have at least one to two copies of this in your extra deck if you plan on playing the Salamangrate archetype. Now this is a brand new card, and this is an amazing card at, for, at that, Salamangrate Mirage Stallio. Man, that artwork is just amazing. So it's a rank three, which can be made with any two level three. So do keep that in mind. It's kind of like MX Saber Invoker in a way. And you can detach a material to special summon one Salamangrate monster from your deck in defense position. So it's immediately gonna give you a plus one. The downside is, you know, you can't activate monster effects for the rest of the turn except fire. So it does lock you into fire restrictions, but that doesn't matter because honestly, if you can make Mirage Stallio, you're pretty much gonna get to your, you know, pretty much your main combo. So even you can play some other level three type engines like, you know, Terror Top, even though it's only at one, the OCG has it at two, they play that. There's stuff like Psychic Wielder. Hell, even the hand traps like the Ghost Girls are level three. So people are Going to be experimenting to see what level three engines work in this deck just so you can turbo into Mirage Stallio and give the deck even more consistency. So amazing card and then also you can bounce a card when it's used as a link material for a Salamangrate link monster. That's great against going against Colossus and things like that. So very very solid card. You're gonna probably want two of these in your extra deck. Now we have Salamangrate Bailinx, and man, this card is just crazy. This is kind of what like brings it all together because it only requires one level four or lower Cyburst monster. Now, obviously all the Salamangrates are Cyburst, but another card that's very important to this strategy, Lady Debug, she doesn't come in this structure deck. However, she is a Cyburst and basically a Stratos for this deck. So by getting copies of her at your disposal as well, she can help pretty much do your entire setup because of Bailinx, and that is what is so incredible. You're gonna wanna play two to three of this in your deck as well. And then the best part is, this kind of has like a return of the Dragon Lord's uh, graveyard effect where it can protect your Salamangrate cards from being destroyed by battle or card effect. I think that's incredible that this card does that. And then you're also just able to add the Sanctuary, which is I believe the field spell to your hand when you bring it out. So very, very good card. And now we start getting into the main deck card, Salamangrate Gazelle. This is kind of like, I don't wanna call it Zodiac Rap here, but it kind of is for a lot of different reasons because if it's summoned you basically just send a salamangrate card to your graveyard and rap here kind of does the same thing but it has a secondary effect where if a salamangrate monster is sent to the graveyard except 
another copy of Gazelle, you can special summon Gazelle from your hand. And the nice thing is you can use both of these effects in the same turn. So basically you can do something like if you send a Salamangrate card, you can special Gazelle. And then because Gazelle was summoned, you can send another Salamangrate card to the graveyard. And she's basically like the main combo starter. And you're just going to go off from here. And all your combos are basically free because the end of the combo usually ends with you getting Gazelle back into your hand, which is amazing. Basically making it so that all your advantage engines are free, even though it may not be the most intimidating board, that's still really nice from a card advantage standpoint. Now we get into the other super Salamangrate Spinny or Spiny. I don't really know which way it's technically supposed to be, but this card combos with Gazelle because if you control a Salamangrate card, you can discard this card, target a face up monster on the field, it gains 500 attack until the end of the turn. Doesn't really seem too special, but its graveyard effect is that if you control a Salamangrate monster other than itself and this card's in your graveyard, you can special summon this card, but banish it if it leaves the field. So basically, if you find a way to get Spinny into the graveyard, and as long as you have something like, oh, I don't know, Gazelle, or you can just use Gazelle to dump Spinny into the graveyard, you get into that, and then you can go into Mirage Stallio because they're both level threes. The synergy is just great, and it's super, super easy to pull stuff like this off. And again, because you have different ways to access Spinny in the graveyard, and because you can special Gazelle if other Salamancrates go to the grave, there's a lot of really cool things you can do with this deck. Now, another super rare, Salaman Great Circle. I mean, this card's just crazy because it's a Rota for the archetype, but it's a quick play spell. So like, that's insane. So basically you can just add any of your Salaman Great monsters to hand. You can set it and then use this during your opponent's turn, but it has a secondary effect that if you want to target a Link monster that was Link summoned, basically using itself, that's kind of like the gimmick of this deck. You can basically make it unaffected by other monster effects. So not only is it a Rota, which you're going to probably use it for 99% of the time, but it's also a way to protect your Salamangrate Link monsters. That is so cool. It is once per turn and it's kind of awkward because you can't like set it and then flip it. So that kind of conflicts with like other means of like trying to play around certain cards. But the fact that it's quick play and you can use it on both players turns is just crazy. Super good consistency card. Any archetype would love to have this card. And I think this is the last super rare, Salamangrate Roar. So it's a counter trap. Basically, it's like an infernity barrier. So when a spell trap card or monster effect is activated while you control a Salamangrate Link monster, negate it, and if you do destroy that card. But what's also cool is that while this card's in the graveyard, if a Salamangrate Link is Link summoned to your field using a monster that has the same name, again, going back to this deck's gimmick, you can set this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. So basically you have the ability to recycle this card from your graveyard and yeah, it does get banished, but it doesn't matter because the fact you don't have to hard draw it, you can send it off of something like Gazelle possibly, and then just reset it that way. There's so many cool things you can do with this card. And the fact that it's an Infernity Barrier, you really can't complain. So now we're gonna get into some other cards here. Salamangrate Raccoon. You don't really play Raccoon too much. I mean, it's just like a level one and it doesn't really do anything that's like too great for the rest of the deck. You know, if it's targeted by an attack for an opponent's monster, send it from the graveyard, target those two monsters and gain life points equal to the attack of the opponent's monster. And then your monster can't be destroyed by battle. Like that's not really like too good. You know, it's just not like really anything that does anything for the archetype. Uh, Salamangrate Mole, I've seen actually be played as like a one of, I believe in the OCG. Uh, you can special summon it if you link summon this turn to a link monster a zone points to. And if you control no monsters, banish this card from your graveyard, target five Salamangrate cards in your graveyard, shuffle them, then draw two cards. So it's a pot of avarice, so I can see why this would be played as a one of. That's all right, but aside from that, it doesn't have like too much synergy with the rest of the archetype. But if you need some recovery, Salamangrate Mole is the way to go. Then we've got stuff like Salamangrate Foul, which is all right. Salamangrate Beat Bison, which is like, it's not really the boss monster of the deck, but it's like, it's okay. Uh, Salamangrate Mirror, then Salamangrate Foxy, which is actually a really good card that you're probably going to want to play in this deck. It's level three, and it has the ability that's kind of like a uh, Sky Striker Area Zero, where if it's normal summoned, you excavate the top three, and then if you get a Salamangrate card, you can add it to your hand. So it's a plus one on summon, which is pretty nice, and then it also has like a Mystical Space Typhoon type effect for popping back row. The fact that it's level three, though, just synergizes extremely well with the deck, and you're probably going to want to play some copies of Foxy. Then we have other 
cards in here like Falco. Uh, Jack Jaguar is another card you're probably gonna play at least one of, maybe if not two. It's got piercing if it attacks a defense position. It's got 1800 attack, so that's formidable. And then also you can uh, target a Salamander Great Monster in your graveyard, accept itself, shuffle it into the deck, and if you do special summon it to your field. So again, just giving you more link fodder to help link climb up into the further uh, stages of your link plays. Then we got stuff like Wolvie, we got Paro, we got Foxer, and then we start to get into the other cards that are the non Salamangrates. So you got like True King Agnimizud, you've got Dogeron, which is pretty nice because I mean, Dogeron is a very welcome inclusion because Sky Strikers in the meta, just nice to be able to kaiju you over big threats. So I think that's a pretty good inclusion, not to mention it's fire. We've got stuff like Flamvel Fire Dog, Fencing Fire Ferret for removal, which is all right. We've got Inferno, and there she is, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Oh man. Now, this is what the third reprint this card has had, so fourth printing in total. Now there's no excuse. If you guys have been waiting for your Ash Blossom reprint, just go ahead and get these now. Buy three of these structure decks and you will be happy because now you have access to one of the best hand traps this game has ever seen. So awesome that the budget players can now get their hands on this. Red Resonator, uh, not one, but two copies of Volcanic Shell. Then we have Four Mud Skipper, and then we get into the spell cards. So Salamangrate Claw, not really played too often. Salamangrate Sanctuary is actually amazing. This is the field spell that you're gonna allow you to, I believe it's called Reincarnation Link Summoning, which allows you to use a Salamangrate Link for the entire cost of summoning another one with the same name. So you can go like Heat Leo into Heat Leo and that triggers your trap cards to set themselves to the graveyard. Really, really uh, just good card all around. You're gonna play at least one of this. It's just phenomenal. Uh, we have Wall of the, or excuse me, Will of the Salamangri. And this card is like, pretty nuts it's like a soul charge s kind of card you know during your main phase special summon a solid man great monster from your hand or graveyard and it's continuous so that means if it stays up you can like keep doing it and it's got some other effects as well which are pretty nice so this is something you might want to test out maybe at one copy the card is actually really really insane and can snowball out of control pretty quickly then we got stuff like Monster Reincarnation, Circle of the Fire Kings, Transmodify, which is a nice addition for the deck as well, Link Bound, Magic Planter, which is also kind of cool to see, Salamangrate Rage, I want to quickly talk about this. This trap's pretty cool, it's kind of like Icarus Attack based off of the Link rating of a Salamangrate Link you control. So if you have Heat Leo, which is Link 3, you can basically uh, target your Heat Leo and then you can pop three cards since it has a Link rating of 3. So that's pretty damn good, that's a 1 for 3 just for having a Heat Leo on the field. Then we got Salamangrate Gift, Transmigration Prophecy, Threatening Roar, Break Off Trap Hole, Backfire, Goes in Match, which is incredible. I know they've been printing this card a lot lately, but just by competitive standards, this card is absolutely amazing, and you're going to want to have a place of it, play set of it anyway. So this is a very, very welcome inclusion. And then we have uh, another Heat Leo with the old artwork. We have a Flame Administrator and a Do Little Chimera. So guys, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this Soul Burner Structure Deck opening. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think, and if you guys are thinking about playing this at a competitive level, I'd really love to hear your thoughts. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.